I'm going to be just selecting boost solenoid, closed loop, click OK. We can see that's going to populate right here. We can test the output if we're unsure if we wired it and the solenoid actually works or not. If we click test, we can see it goes from 0 to 100. So you should see or hear the solenoid click. A keel and engine off. We can do this test to confirm our wiring is good and the solenoid is actually functioning and active before we go and start to do any actual boost control tuning. So now that we've talked about setting up our boost control, the basics of a turbocharger, the wastegate, and what the function of the boost control solenoid is going to be, let's now jump in and take a look at setting up and working with our closed loop boost control. So we're going to move into our window here, boost control closed loop, and we can start to take a look at our very first portion here under mode. So starting on mode here, let's talk about our different options. We have open loop base table tuning, we have closed loop, and then we have closed loop wastegate back pressure control. Now in this tutorial, we're gonna be really focusing on our first two options. We're not gonna go over here our third option. That's not gonna be the, very common to use. And we'll find that the first two here are gonna be the most commonly used. That's what I'm gonna be covering in this tutorial. The open loop base table tuning will allow us to establish what the base duty cycle is going to be at the requested target boost that we'll find from our target table down here. So the basis of the closed loop control working properly hinges upon our open loop duty cycle table here to get us to the boost that we're after so that the closed loop control doesn't have to do a whole lot of work. So we can see open loop base table tuning allows us to do this uh, essentially set up in our open loop at the requested target boost. We'll talk about that in a second. And then we can turn on closed loop. And the closed loop that will allow us to start, it will allow the max to start to make adjustments against the base wastegate duty cycle values in here in order to hit the target if we're off. And we'll talk about that as well in a little bit. Again, this last option here, I'm not going to cover. I don't use it with the max. I use these first two options. Let's first break down how this open loop base table tuning works. Then we'll go through some of our setup configuration details, and then we'll go into the actual closed loop because we need to do open loop first before we do the actual closed loop. So this is gonna be where you start, and then you end up if you wanna have the max going in and having some feedback capability and control within the closed loop, you'll move into closed loop. So let's go back here into our open loop base table tuning. So the way this is work, we have a target table and the target table requests the boost that we wanna run. In this case, we can see our target table is based on throttle position versus engine RPM. Now we can change our axes in the table here. We can base it on whatever we like. It doesn't have to be throttle position versus engine RPM. We could have gear versus engine speed, gear versus ground speed, a timer. Um, you could have just ground speed. There's all those possibilities we talked about in our open loop video we can actually go in and configure our target table with those particular uh, configuration details of how we want to put down the boost to put down the power in, in, in a roundabout way so that we're able to gain traction. It's all about gaining traction or being able to manipulate the power levels of the vehicle with a variety of different ways to go about that. And that's going to be here in our target table. So we set the target. Once we set the target, it's going to look up here in our open loop table here in this open loop based table tuning format. It's going to be taking a look at whatever the target set it'll look at the duty cycle associated with that. Now on the open loop, it'll run that particular duty cycle. The max is gonna make any adjustments to that. That's what's done in closed loop. The max can actually start from the duty cycle and make adjustments from this point. Now the reason why we're starting off here in the open loop base table tuning format is so that we can get these base wastegate duty cycle values extremely close, if not right on, to the target boost that we're request in our target table. So the general order of operations here when you're dealing with this open loop uh, style format would be to go into your target table here, set this very low. Let's say your wastegate spring level is something like six pounds. We could just set our target to six. We'd have to make sure in our table here that we've associated breakpoints along where we're going in here and having our boost levels. What I would say here is if you're not going up to something like 40 pounds of boost, let's say you're going up to something like 28 pounds of boost, you wanna have your resolution here a bit better and more appropriate for your boost application that you're working with, how much boost you expect to run. So in this case, I would probably reconfigure this. Maybe every four PSI, I would have a breakpoint. So we'd have 14, we'd have 18 here. We'd have one at 22. We'd have one here at 26. And then we could do one here, maybe at 30. So we'll just have these again, reestablishing our breakpoints a little bit better. So what we'll do here, start off and we'll put the, the, the target level at the wastegate spring, proximate to the wastegate spring. So the wastegate spring is six pounds we'll see that we don't need any duty cycles. So from zero to six PSI, this will be zero in the table. So we'll just baseline it. Then we wanna go and turn up the boost. So we'll go here and we'll put a value here of 10 PSI. Let's say we go from six to 10. And then I'll go here in my table 
at 10 PSI, and then I'll make sure that I set the duty cycle to get me to 10 PSI. It's our job to fill in the blanks here with this open loop duty cycle table. So if this only takes, let's say, 20% uh, duty cycle, that's going to be what gets me to 10 pounds, that's gonna be good. It gives me a style at basis to go either and stay into open loop or go into closed loop. Now the next thing would be going up to the next break point, which would be 14 PSI. So I go up to 14 PSI, and then I have to reestablish what the duty cycle is going to be. So let's say that was 30% duty cycle. You'll find that trend continues on and on up to the maximum boost that we'd like to run um, within the boost control routine. Now, you have to be mindful as you're going in and actually turning up the boost, you have to actually be tuning fuel and spar timing and going and doing all the calibration process along with that. But this is going to be in conjunction with tuning fuel and spar timing. We'll be walking our boost up, we'll be establishing our base open loop table here. This is going to be the basis of our closed loop control. If we have poorly tuned open loop duty cycle values that don't get us to the actual target boost here, let's say the duty cycle is too high or too low, that's going to cause the max to make too much adjustment and we could have undershooting or overshooting in our boost control or, or oscillations. So we want to make sure that our values here are solid and that the adjustments the max needs to make are very minor, maybe only 2-3% duty cycle depending on ambient conditions and elevation and all the other factors that go along with um, affecting our boost control. It only needs to make small adjustments against these base wastegate duty cycle values. You can think of your open loop duty cycle table as being your main VE table as far as boost control goes. You wanna have your main VE table tuned properly so that when you're in closed loop format, your closed loop short term adjustment or short and long term adjustments will make minimal corrections against the base VE table, the base main fuel table. Um, if we have minimal adjustments, that means our base VE table is solid. We've calibrated that correctly. We're representing the estimated air mass or airflow coming into the engine properly, and that we know our fuel model is sound. Same idea here with boost control. This open loop duty cycle table will be really uh, hinging upon the whole boost control working properly, and we want to spend the time in calibrating this right so that when we move into closed loop control, the actual adjustments that the closed loop control can make will be minimal. The same idea as having a minimal short-term and a long-term fuel trim adjustment against our main VE table. So hopefully that makes sense. So it's pretty basic how this will work. We'll simply again go, go through, command a certain target PSI, set the, the correct duty cycle here to achieve that, and then we'll find everything should fall in line. We can con reconfigure these axes here if we want to have more or less breakpoints. I do want to mention we don't want to change this table from target map pressure on our axes here. It needs to be referencing target map because that's what we're commanding in our target table here. If we reference something else like throttle position, this would not work right. It's gonna break the way that the boost control is going to work. And in fact, I don't think we can actually change this. If I go to change axis source, oh, it does look like it'll allow you to change that. So um, you don't wanna change it. You wanna keep this um, for this target base boost so that it references your target boost versus your target request. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.